All right, so this is a quick lecture for us to review the sources of genetic variation that we find in sexually reproducing organisms. And the first uh, type of variation, uh, variety that we find in um, uh, sexually reproducing organisms is the fact that uh, random fertilization provides a source of uh, diversity in organisms. So this genetic variation that we get um, when a egg and sperm collide or fertilize, when the sperm fertilizes the egg, the sperm is actually one of thousands of um, cells of sperm that come and fertilize the egg. Uh, only one of those actually um, fertilizes the egg. So the fact that there's all these other sperm carrying 23 chromosomes in, the, in human sperm, um, the fact that one out of all of these actually fertilizes is considered random because it could be any of these that would fertilize this egg. So the sperm is a sex cell and it's called a gamete. This is stuff we need to know, all this new terminology. This here is the egg from the female and that is also a gamete. Okay, so the sperm and the egg both carry 23 chromosomes or what we call a haploid cell. And in those 23 chromosomes are genes that code for certain traits. And it's important to know that a source of variation that's found in sexually reproducing organisms is this, this source of random fertilization, okay? That provides genetic diversity. <coughs> and this is why you don't look exactly like, if you have siblings, you don't, um, that are biological, you don't look exactly like them because the sperm and the egg that made your brother or sister um, actually carried maybe some of the same information, but definitely some variety in it. And so then you might look a little bit more like one than the other, and that's just based on the number of genes that you have in common. The second source <coughs> of genetic variation is our mutations. Um, so mutations, again, these are changes in the genetic makeup. So if you had CTA and um, that made uh, an R mRNA molecule that was GAU, and this should be review for you, then you would use the amino acid table to figure out what amino acid that would make, and then that would make a protein. And a protein could be uh, anything, and it could create a phenotype if you have so many of these codons together. Um, so then if this A was changed to accident, let's say it was a, um, it was C, T, G, that's a substitution mutation, right? Because you're just substituting one of these uh, nitrogen bases. So that's substitution mutation and that would transcribe into G, A, C, right? And then that might make a different amino acid than this one. And so as a result, it would make a different protein. And then that would result in maybe a different phenotype. So this could be maybe straight hair. This could be curly hair, okay? So mutations, like substitution mutations, even deletions and additions, um, can create change in the, the protein, which is the phenotype, and that's a source of variation. Another one is crossing over. We just learned about this this week. Crossing over occurs in prophase one of meiosis, and this is when the uh, homologous chromosomes are lined up in a tetrad. So here's one chromosome, and here is the other chromosome homologous chromosomes, you get one from mom, one from dad. The ones pictured here have been replicated because replication occurs prior to prophase one during interphase, specifically the S part of interphase where DNA copies itself. And then during G2 of that interphase is when it prepares for cell division. So now we're in cell division. We are in prophase one, specifically of meiosis one. And what happens is the, these uh, four or these two chromosomes here are aligned in a tetrad, right? And that's where they're next to each other like this, XX. And then their little legs or chromatid will cross over 
and cross over, crossing over is when they're in synapsis. Synapsis is the position that these chromatids are in so that crossing over can occur. So a little bit of the purple will go to the blue, a little bit of the blue will go to the purple. So that is an exchange of genes. That's why they call it crossing over. <coughs> Again, it occurs in prophase one. If you look at your foldable, look at prophase one. The chromosomes are arranged in a tetrad. This tetrad allows for um, synapsis to occur. And synapsis is when they cross over each other like this. And then the actual exchange of the genes is called crossing over. So it's kind of like you're shuffling the genes and that is a source of variation. The next one is independent assortment. Independent assortment occurs during metaphase one and metaphase two of meiosis one and two. This is when the chromosomes align at the equatorial plate or metaphase, metaphase plate in a random order. So they independently assort themselves at the equator. Okay, so there's no choosing in where they're going. They just align themselves accordingly. <clears throat> so if you had your cell and then you had your metaphase plate or equator, the way that these chromosomes would align themselves um, is completely independent of each other. So here's one, here's another, and then let's do the purple ones like we did before. Um, so we'll do some purple ones here and here. So this could be switched, you know. So this is one way that it could work. Another way it could work is that this purple could go to this side and then this blue could go to this side. So there is a chance that you'll get all of the paternal genes in one side and then all of the maternal genes in another side. Um, it's just inde they independently assort themselves to do that, okay? And then the last uh, source of variation is called non-disjunction. And non-disjunction is when the chromosomes fail to separate properly. And this happens during anaphase. So you've got your cell, you have your chromosomes, and specifically your chromat the chromatid here here and here. They're getting pulled to opposite ends or what we call the equator. So here and here. This one is showing um, the chromosomes being pulled to either direction and they're in the right number. So this one is good. But then during, ana during another situation, these could actually get mixed up and the chromosomes fail to separate properly. So then you get one here, one here, and then another one. And then over on this side, you only get one. So they fail to separate properly. Okay, so non-disjunction is a source of variation because the chromosomes fail to separate properly. Okay. <clears throat> um, and it's important to know, too, that it doesn't have to be necessarily an entire chromosome that fails to separate. It could actually be a fragment of a chromosome. Okay, so it doesn't have to be one that looks like this. It could be just a little piece of it that actually ends up going into one side or one pull, really one cell, as an extra little piece of chromosome. And you will see a phenotype as a result of that or some kind of abnormality. There are many um, syndromes associated with non-disjunction, one of them being trisomy 21. And trisomy 21 is where you get an extra number 21 chromosome. You can get a whole extra chromosome for trisomy 21. You could also get a little piece of chromosome 21. And then these changes um, the, the differences between these two, you will see possibly in their, in development, in their body stature, um, uh, their 
uh, mental cognitive delays, if there's any. And so you see those differences as a result of non-disjunction. We will be going over, actually in our presentation, it shows some of the disorders associated with non-disjunction. As, so this is all about chromosomes failing to separate during anaphase, and it could be during anaphase 1 or even 2, okay? Um, because the chromosomes are moving apart, if you remember. And, and it, when they move apart, they can move apart in a way that's not correct, okay? So there's a possibility for error. All right, so that is the end of the sources of genetic variation flip lecture. This should be in your composition book. Um, it would go on your, the right side because this is a source of input, okay? Um, and that's it. Thanks.